Win Win 20% off Black Friday sale, November 21 through 28th. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's November 2021, we have a brand new feature for the Mirage 2000C, TAF, GCI Data Link. When I first read about this, I must admit I didn't think it was that interesting. Now I've used it, turns out massively interesting. It's the first incarnation in DCS of a radio-based semi-automated GCI intercept system. So what that means is a GCI played by AI will automatically send information through to us in our aircraft of how exactly to intercept this guy. Real life interceptions are really difficult, especially if the target is fast. So this information is critical to intercepting bombers and fighters in time. There's quite a lot to this, so we're going to try and keep this video as easy and simple as possible. The scenario, we're a blue fighter, we're at a blue base Batumi. There is another blue base here, Cobuleti. None of the other bases are blue. We also have a blue SAM site here. It's a Patriot in this case, and it has a unit name of Patriot. There are two hostiles incurring, 70 to 80 miles from the west. Last thing in the mission editor, we can choose whether TAF is enabled or not by clicking on our aircraft here. Additional properties here, we can disable it here if we want. Let's enable it and go to the cockpit. We're going to show it from a QRA scramble. So first, we need to tune our aircraft in to one of the AI GCIs. Available are Batumi because it's a blue base, Cobuleti because it's a blue base, and the blue SAM. Kneeboard, right shift and kilo. Use the arrows to cycle right in the pages. Here are our GCI channels. 01 for Batumi, 02 for Patriot in Golf Foxtrot 09 Grid Square, and 03 for Cobuleti. I could use any of these. In terms of detectable range, it will use the detectable range of that unit. So Patriot has a certain detectable range. The EWR at Batumi will have a certain detectable range and so on. Note, to maintain the link between these guys here, we need to maintain radio range and line of sight, including earth curvature. I could choose any of these and they'll all work, but I'm gonna use zero too. So, to our brand new EVF TAF panel, right hip, let's tune in here, right click, channel two. Next, we need to set our second radio, the UHF radio, to link with that EVF panel, UHF radio, right click once to f1 and wait just bear in mind that if we <laughs> there we go we've got a beep to say the information's come through from an intercept i'm just going to pause now just bear in mind if you are doing it from the ground remember that the radio range is simulated so if the sound site was 50 miles away it wouldn't reach me because of earth curvature usual practice is to set the gci that's going to be closest to you if you're on the ground there's an intercept information from the gci i cannot access it on the ground we need to take off scramble Master arm on, and we're going to go through to an air to air mode. I'm just going to select my cannon because it's the only weapon I've got in this case. Note, we now have TAF. Before we do that, we know that we've got information for an intercept through because we've got TEL here. TEL will show if there's intercept information and we haven't selected TAF yet. So let's select TAF. This shows the information for the intercept on BTB, the radar screen, the VTH, the HUD, and the IDN or the HSI. Let's start with HSI. First, we need to change mode to TEL or in the English cockpit, DTL. Right knob. We've now got the distance to the target shown, 52.7 nautical miles. This arrow here shows the direct heading to the target. This arrow here shows us the GCI command vector. If you like, that's gonna be the intercept heading. So that's where the target is. That's where we should fly. If the GCI information was not coming through properly, these arrows would be neutral to the right and the distance would be red flagged. Next, VTB. Remember, we do not have a radar lock on the hostile. It's the GCI that has radar information on the hostile. We have the target speed, Mach 0.7. The target's bearing, I would actually call it heading, but according to the manual, a bearing of 0.79. That is the true heading of the hostile that is where he is heading we have our closure rate of 654 knots his altitude in hundreds of feet 26,600 feet and how many aircraft are in the group just one long yellow line that is the direct heading to the hostile short yellow vector that is the gci commanded heading and speed speed is shown by the length of that line 
my current speed is shown by the green arrow here. So I'm going about half as fast as I need to. Next, we have this little chevron here on the heading tape. That shows the commanded heading. It's probably going to be easier if I turn off heading just a bit. So I turn over here. Repause. We can now see that I'm heading in that direction at that speed. I should be heading at that direction at that speed. I should also be flying at that altitude in hundreds of feet, 31,600. So let's unpause quickly and do that. Afterburner on, on the correct heading. Pull up for the altitude, increase speed, pause. And you can see now that more or less we're at the correct speed, which should be max 0.9 by the way. And we're on the way to the altitude of 31,600 feet. The next thing to say is that all of the information that we're showing here is dynamic. It will all be constantly changing. So it's a fully dynamic process all the way up to the radar or visual intercept. On the HUD, the information we've got is ROE. It's shown above the weapon. In this case, LIB. LIB. Free fire, there are no friendlies within 20 miles of the hostile. IFF, gain IFF because there is a friendly within 20 miles of the hostile. Viz, gain visual ID, there is a friendly within 2 to 5 miles of the hostile. Int, hold fire, there is at least one friendly within 2 miles of the hostile. Which leads on to two more questions. How does the AI GCI determine which target to intercept? It's just done on basic threat. This guy is closest to the GCI station in question, the SAM site, so it will use this one here. Next, what about friendly AI aircraft? Friendly AI aircraft and wingmen will follow these orders too in terms of ROE and in terms of navigation information. Note that the ROE information on the VDH will be dynamic too. So as things change on the battlefield, this will change. So you need to follow this guy here and this guy here, possibly this guy here, all the way to engagement. Last thing I've got to show is that if you do lose contact with your radio station, I've got nothing, no hills to go behind, but let's just say I did go behind a hill and I'm going to lose contact to the radio station by changing to another channel. Bear in mind it takes several seconds for the uh, TAF to update, so just be patient. You can see there that we get a beep and TAF is flashing. That means we've lost contact. Let's regain contact. We've got the beep, we've got the information coming through and there's no TAF flashing. That is the basics of the brand new TAF GCI intercept. Please enjoy it. I hope that was useful and see you later.